Hello Canterbury and welcome to Canterbury Live, Wednesday the 19th of November. Well it was supposed to be hail wasn't it, the weather was supposed to cut up, it's still looking pretty fine at 4.30 at the moment but you never know, it could change couldn't it. Well yesterday we met up with De Deb Donnell who um, is a photographer, author and she had a wonderful book, I'll just show this off now, there it is, whoopsie daisy, there we go. Um, just wanted to mention that it is actually only $14.95 to buy the book great postage as well but you can purchase it at any great uh, retailer in Kaipoi, Christchurch or um, yeah Rangiora and also you can buy it at the Quake City in the Cashel Mall so um, a great book to buy great for Christmas as well um, and on that also another wonderful event happening this weekend is a Thorington Market yes that is happening on Saturday the 22nd of November between 10 and 2 at the Thorington School it's a community boot market so if you can make it you're in the area then why not go out and do that um, also I'll just quickly change things here are you being served? Yes, we have the lovely chaps in to talk about this wonderful play that's happening in November, early December. And we have some complimentary passes to give away to Are You Being Served? So if you'd like to win one, just simply call through to 033770333. And remember, it's um, in the Elmwood Auditorium and it's the Cantry Repertory um, Theatre Society that are putting it on, which is really cool. Today in history, 19th of November, what did happen? Did anyone have a birthday? Well. Yes, they did. First up, yes, we have Jodie Foster, actor, director, producer. She's 52 today. Um, of course, she is award-winning, but she's best known for her roles in the films Taxi Driver, The Accused, and my favourite, The Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Next up, this is a little bit frightening. I love Meg Ryan, but seriously, what has happened to her lips? She is 53 today. She became America's sweetheart with starring roles in When Harry Met Sally, Sleepless in Seattle, and You've Got Mail. Happy birthday to your lips as well, Meg. And here we have fashion designer Calvin Klein. He's 72 today and is known for his line of menswear and womenswear, and yes, the underwear. And uh, ladies, I haven't forgotten about you or the men. I think that's a very fair image there quite fair as well and oh now wonderful movie of course um, this is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest this was released today in 1975 if you have not seen this movie please go to our video land go online I don't know how you're going to find it but it is a fantastic movie with of course Jack Nicholson who plays Randall it won five big top Oscar awards including of course best actor Jack Nicholson incredible genius and in this movie he is wonderful so very busy on the 19th of November. Coming up on today's show, we talk to Elite Pest Control about rats, disgusting, and rodents. And we head out to Rangara Vets and talk about foreign bodies. And I don't know if that's their language, it just could be things, random things inside your animals. So we'll find out more about that. But speaking of random, yes, first up, I'm joined by David Clearwater. That's me. Yeah, yeah Mr. Random <laughs> yourself. And look at the legs. Tell you what, this is. You know, it could be frightening off our viewers there. at the moment, Dave, just quietly. Well, it's a nice sunny day and summer's here, so I don't want to wear jeans. Well, you, you could have had a spray tan or something, buddy. Yeah, I used to get paint roofs and shorts and then I'd go home with paint all over me, but... You could spray tan yourself. Well, a spray gun any colour, there's about 16 colours. Yeah, there colours goes climate plan. What's Clear that? water, spray tanning. No, 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 no. that's oh, a bit well. rough for that. Anyway, <laughs> anyway hey, yeah. leading up to Christmas, how are we yeah, going? We're busy, we're, we're always busy. Um, we've got a lot happening, we've got, got three kitchens on order at the moment, people wanting to upgrade their kitchens, so we've got three on order coming coming through. We've got a couple of bathrooms on the go as well, where people want to upgrade their older bathrooms, old stainless steel share trays with the old door that keeps, you know, the old three slider door. Yeah. They keep falling off and you know, you've got to clip the clip in the bottom to get it going again. Do people still get stainless steel kitchens? Not the old uh, No, not really, no. It's no, all for mica all for mica and stone now. So artificial that artificial concrete looks yeah. like marble. And it's really, really good, really durable. Kitchens today are now really, really made to last. They're really, really good. So yeah, we're we're busy doing that. and plus a lot of painting. Yeah. Roofs roofs next week. Next week's a big week for roofing, just hoping the wind holds off. Yeah, well that's it. The wind has oh, been terrible at the moment. Yeah, we're doing inside work, so we're gonna start start cranking into them. I mean, safety's pretty important with your team as well, isn't it? Oh, yes, absolutely. They all wear harnesses. Supposed to wear harnesses. But, yeah, they got harnesses. They wear 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 harnesses. Yeah. Dave, the guy, seriously. <laughs> the guys know what they're doing, so it's up to them. Yeah. <laughs> I leave it to them. Yeah, I tried. I'm too old for roofs now. I tried. Now. I tried. It's yeah, I'm too old for getting on roofs now. <laughs> I've done, been there and done that. So, no, Ray's very good at doing roofs, and we're training up a couple of young guys, so it's all good. So we need more roofs. We need a lot of roofs. Like, 
We need lots of roofs, but okay. we can get through them pretty quick. Yeah. So when we're at home over the Christmas break, we're going to see a lot of things probably. Because when, you, when you're working all day, you don't mm. really get to see and live in the house as much, do you? No, like that's Christmas right. in those times and the downtime, you, you pick up all things these things. And, yeah. Well, you we used to say years ago, look, go outside and stand at your mailbox and have a look at your house, and a third of your property is taken up by roof. And if it looks dull and flat, it's usually a colour steel roof and it's all faded and they've got to be painted. And then there's your barge boards and your suffetes and if you've got wooden windows. And they've got, you've got to keep on top of things. And really, you should, every 10 years, you've really got to get back in and get, keep painting. You've got to keep maintenance. So wouldn't it be a good idea to actually plan about doing some of these renovations, especially like the roofs and that, yeah. now oh, for, for, the, for after Christmas then? Yeah, you have to ring now to get us booked in for after Christmas. I, I, I uh, looked at a job this morning, we're going to be doing that in December. It's a small job, it's going to fit in between, you know, before Christmas quite mm. nicely. But basically we're looking for January work. You are? So you're looking yeah, for January work? Yeah, absolutely January looking for January work. You have to book it now, because a, a lot of houses are still being fixed through EQC. And we've got, still got quite a few of them on the go. And the numbers are starting to drop off as, as Fletchers get through their lot and, the, and there's not many left. So, um, so, so before we call to... you, do we need to sit down um, and grab a glass of water before we talk price and that about ruse, or? Yeah, the biggest thing is you have to have a look at it to see how big it is and see how much damage is up there and mm. then um, it's not that dear to fix your roof. At the end of the day, the roof is the big thing that keeps the water out at night and it's, it's worth investing three or five or six thousand dollars to fix it because it's a lot more to replace it. Do you think a lot of people have been, um, had to be educated after the, the earthquake and the aftershocks about really doing things well? In their homes? Oh, absolutely. Um, everybody, all the builders and, and all the architects, everybody, the whole building industry has stepped up a notch for as far as strength and durability wise. And it's far, far better for our kids and next generation. Everything that we're doing now is still going to be here. It's really good. And it's an exciting time in the trade, to be honest. It's really good. Yeah. You must see some positive changes happening. I can see it just now. We've turned a corner, haven't we? People are actually really seeing above. Mm. all the debris and that, they're actually looking uh, well, excited? Yeah, yeah. well we are, we, everybody is. There's more CAFs in Christchurch now than there ever been, I think. <laughs> yeah, we're all excited, we've got a new city and moving forward and people are doing up their houses and, and getting maintenance done, so it's, it's a huge exciting time. It's, it's, I, I can't say really, but I will say, it, you know, it's probably, it could have been the best thing that ever happened for Christchurch. It's a huge makeover. Yeah, there's, there's different there's winners always, and losers on There always is, so it's sides. sad to say, yeah, but yeah. You know, it's, it's, we've got to look forward, can't look backwards, and that's what we're doing. And, you know, those projects, we're all working, we're very busy, we've got families. Mm -hmm. We haven't got time to manage it, David. Have no, we? well, that's where we come in, because we've got access to all the, all the subcontractors and we've got, we've got our own builder, we've got two builders now working for us, we're taking another guy on, so there's two builders on our team, and we take care of all the tiling and the flooring and, and even the electrician, the painting, the plastering, the roofing if you need it done. You know, re-roofing, um, everybody that's required. We've even got a draftsman as well that we can use, oh, a cobbler okay. of mine, he's a draftsman, he can draw plans and he can do all permits and submit permits to council. Um, our builder now is a licensed building practitioner, so we've got all the, everything, all the boxes are basically ticked for any type of alteration. And, and not, as I said on Let's Go Shopping, we can do work up to 100,000 quite comfortably. We've got the finances to do it, we've got the people and the skills available to do it. Anything over and above that, we, we'd flick you to a, a bigger team obviously, but. We've so done a few water, jobs around yeah. that area. So clean water are actually taking the stress away from us, aren't you? Yeah, we can do. We just try and make it as easy as we can because the homeowner can't drum up everybody to arrive on the same day. You try and get the electrician, the tiler and the plumber and the mm. builder and the painter to be there that week to finish it, you'd be pulling your hair out. For us, they just, we've got a good rapport with our guys and they'll come, just give them a call, let them know and they'll be there. Um, trust is really important to you, David, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. The homeowner's got to be able to trust that the person in charge, the company that's doing the job, to make sure they, you know, they've got to know they're going to get value for money, and also the staff on site, and that's where we're lucky. We've got good local staff, all local people who live in the town. They're all around my age, our age, yeah. in that area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one thing with um, tradesmen, I think I can speak for a lot of people at home, is communication is one thing that really, really gets up people's noses when yeah, they it's don't a, it's hear a real from hard the tradesmen. One. Yeah, I know. We try our best. I can't answer my phone all the time. A lot of people have to leave messages and I've got to get back to it. But I'm actually tr moving into emails. I love emails because people will email me. It's really easy, clearwater.painting at extra.co.nz. Um, flick me an email and then when I'm at my computer and I can sit and think about it, I can, give, I can dedicate the time to that email. Where if you're driving around town talking on a phone or you're heading to a job, you're in the middle of someone else's house and the phone <laughs> rings, you know, I've got two, two jobs on the go instead of one you're trying to concentrate. <laughs> it's really hard. 
much. So. Okay. Hey, we'll see you next time, Dave. You yeah, take we'll, care. We'll talk about that a bit further. Work yeah. on those legs. <laughs> hey, stay tan. with us after the break. Yeah. We talk to Elite Pest Control. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into Stand Assist Chairs from More Mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them, they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Come on down to Fairy Mead Golf. Care for a game of paintball? How about some swings on the old driving range? Or on our par 3 nine hole golf course? Test your skills on the mini golf course or have a go at the air gun shooting range. Then relax at the Wow Cafe with one of our super succulent Wow Burgers. Whether you want to perfect your swing or are looking for a fun family day out, come down to Fairy Mead Golf, 50 Fairy Mead Park Drive, right next to the Fairy Mead Heritage Park. Putt holes. To some, a simple hole in the ground, causing no harm and no concern. But don't let that fool you. Potholes are dangerous. Did you know potholes have been linked to numerous nasty falls and flat tires? So if you have a pothole situation on your property, don't panic. Call the Pothole Repair Company. They'll fix your potholes in a jiffy. So next time you see a pothole on your driveway or in your car park, call the Pothole Repair Company. Star Taxis has been servicing the Canterbury region for over 80 years. Canterbury owned and operated with the passion for providing safe, reliable public transport in Christchurch to Cantabrians and visitors to our city. Home safe every time with Blue Star Taxis. Well, if you're a little squeamish, yes, and I am, creature crawlies and I'm talking about the big hairy ones that'd be rats and that's what we're talking about now with elite pest control be prepared for your skin to crawl because that's exactly what mine did when I saw some of the images hello Gary and Dawn we're talking rats today rodents Gary yes rodents seem to be around all year but they definitely are you know, more of a problem in the winter because they come inside because it's cold outside and so they eat and amazing, they climb the tree most of the time beside your house and jump on the roof and through the guttering they find a way inside your house. Oh. So most of the time you don't see them, they're in the roof, mm. but occasionally you do get them where they might, a cat might bring one in or it might come in through an open window or door. And you can hear them, can't you? Yes. Dawn, I mean, they do make an almighty. I mean, in fact, we've got some amazing images <laughs> of Gary um, and his rat friends and they were, oh wow, yeah. That is a substantial beast there. Yeah, that's a Norway rat, or commonly called a river rat. They're the bigger ones, and they're very, very common in Christchurch. And you find those around the rivers. That's a typical burrow from a Norway rat. Yeah. Why the Norway? Just a bit of trivia. Why they call it uh, Norway? I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it could be something to do with the boats, maybe. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. The, the Latin name is Rattus norvegicus. Yeah, so. Dirty old rat, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and where, where have we got here? The rat is... Well, this, this is a typical situation for a rat, get, finding its home inside a warm place. This is a spa pool, the innards of a spa pool, Ooh. and they'll, so you'll find them in those sort of places where it's warm, and it's uh, living in there, and we had to set up traps for it to get it out, and then that's the result. <laughs> yeah. Look at that tail, that yeah. is so gross. <laughs> that is incredible, and look at it there. Yeah, this is an interesting one. This, this is one of the ones where a rat gets inside a house and the lady opened the door and saw a rat in the room and then just oh. closed the door and called us. Ah, uh, yeah. And then we went together to this place and we couldn't find this rat and we're just picking up stuff, you know, because, you know, <gasps> even though we do it for a job, you still get a bit of a fright when you see one. Yeah. So we just pick up something and pick up this and we go around the whole room, we empty the whole place out, we just couldn't find this rat. And we look behind the TV and here it was just holding on holding on to the wires as you saw in that picture there, you know, so it's amazing. And then when... Oh, we, animated animal. You can't grab animal. it because you just couldn't get it. And um, so it, it jumped down and it ran around. And, oh my goodness. And it just jumped off the couch, went straight past my face. Uh, yeah. 
Who got it in the end? Foul. Oh, I'm sorry, there's no other word to describe it. And that's why. Why would you even think about trying to get a rat yourself, really? Well, yeah, well, we, we, we feel you? a bit of trepidation about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what happens, like, heaven forbid, heaven forbid you have a rat in your house, um, what do we do? Do we call you immediately? But can you come out? I mean, what should we do in the meantime before you actually get there? Because, you know, you can't jump in your TARDIS and arrive there immediately, so... Well, often they just give us a call and we make a time to come and see them. But they close off the room mm -hmm. and just leave it okay. and wait for us to come. Oftentimes there is an exit point for the rat to leave. So we'll look and often they're not there. But uh, they can often be uh, nesting in under the dishwasher or in the fridge or behind cupboards in the mm. little spaces underneath the kitchen cupboards under the sink as well. Oh my goodness, it's gross. I think everyone going home tonight in their cupboards and they're going to be really gingerly looking there. <laughs> um, Gary, you know, you do take away the ugly factor from it though, don't you, for us, and make it easy, the whole process? Yes, we do, yes. Yes, we, we, we certainly take care of it. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. It's as simple as actually just giving yeah. you a call at Elite Pest Control and then you just take literally control of the situation mm -hmm. and give our home back to us without our little friends. Yeah. Exactly. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. My goodness, elite pest control. It's as simple as that. If you do find one of these little people, or little creatures, sorry, in your house, then give them a call. They're at 27 Cashmere Road in Christchurch. Phone 03332 or go to their website, elitepestcontrol.co.nz. Well, stay with us from one type of body to another. We head to Runga Event and we're talking foreign bodies. See you soon. With the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk. Blue Star Taxis has been servicing the Canterbury region for over 80 years. Canterbury owned and operated with the passion for providing safe, reliable public transport in Christchurch to Cantabrians and visitors to our city. Home safe every time with Blue Star Taxis. Come on down to Fairy Mead Golf. Care for a game of paintball? How about some swings on the old driving range? Or on our par 3 9 hole golf course? Test your skills on the mini golf course or have a go at the air gun shooting range. Then relax at the Wow Cafe with one of our super succulent Wow Burgers. Whether you want to perfect your swing or are looking for a fun family day out, come down to Ferrymead Golf, 50 Ferrymead Park Drive, right next to the Ferrymead Heritage Park. Putt holes. To some, a simple hole in the ground, causing no harm and no concern. But don't let that fool you. Putt holes are dangerous. Did you know potholes have been linked to numerous nasty falls and flat tyres? So if you have a pothole situation on your property, don't panic. Call the Pothole Repair Company. They'll fix your potholes in a jiffy. So next time you see a pothole on your driveway or in your car park, call the Pothole Repair Company. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs for more mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them, they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Well, do you have any foreign bodies? Do you know anyone that is foreign? Well, you may find them out at Rung Your Event because today we're talking foreign bodies. Today at the Rung Your Event Centre, Rebecca sinks her teeth into the problem of dogs with an appetite for some more unusual items. Hi, I'm Rebecca Waite, I'm one of the vets at RBC and today we're going to talk about um, intestinal foreign bodies in dogs. I've got Honey here um, who's a young golden retriever who's our poster child for um, eating naughty things and getting them stuck. She hasn't had it happen to her yet but it's probably only a matter of time given her breed and her temperament. Um, we see dogs very regularly with um, things that they've eaten that have become stuck in the bowel um, and the majority of those patients do need surgery. 
surgery to, to address that and it's certainly a life threatening problem. Um, so we'll talk through today the sorts of things that, um, that we tend to see, um, the sorts of objects that we get um, and the signs that you might see um, if your dog um, had an intestinal obstruction. Um, in the last couple of months um, the things that we could think of off the top of our heads that we've seen in dogs' tummies and had to take to surgery include a, um, a whole lot of walnuts um, in their shells, um, a pair of knickers, uh, corn cobs, stones, a whole towel um, which is an impressive effort um, and all sorts of other things. Stones are a very common one, cooked bones, um, pieces of bones um, definitely are a, again a common one um, and some of these patients can present really very unwell and in a life threatening situation. Um, if we catch them really nice and early it's much easier to, to help that patient and, and get away with a, a, a less major surgery and a shorter hospital stay. So the sorts of things we'd usually see um, is a dog who was um, vomiting um, and usually pretty depressed. Sometimes they'll have diarrhea but not always. Um, pretty much consistently a vomiting dog, not often feeling like eating as much or drinking as much as normal, sometimes not eating or drinking at all, um, and usually really quite dull, um, not th their normal energy levels. Um, the breeds that are the most common ones are um, labs and retrievers and probably beagles because they're the type that eat anything and everything but it can happen in any breed and we certainly do do see the problem occasionally in cats as well who are more prone to eating um, little threads and ribbons and pieces of wool and that sort of thing. Um, We've got an x-ray up here um, of one of our patients that we saw um, a month ago who had eaten some walnuts, um, quite a lot of walnuts, um, and there's, uh, we can see the, sort of the shadows of the walnuts here um, obstructing the bowel and there's an awful lot of gas in the intestine as well. Walnuts, we're lucky, they'll show up on an x-ray, um, so stones for example, but a towel or um, underwear, which seems to be a common one for dogs to eat, um, doesn't show up on an x-ray and all we'd likely see in that situation are these accumulations of gas which show up as black on the x-ray here um, alongside the, the um, symptoms that the dog's showing us and obviously a very painful tender tummy and in that situation we'll often have to take that dog to surgery to explore on the suspicion that we have got a blockage. Um, certainly most dogs who we get early enough um, for this type of problem go on to do very very well um, with surgery in a day or two in the hospital um, but it would be better if we didn't have to get there so I guess the, the moral of the story is supervise your dog really carefully with what they play with and what they eat um, and um, don't feed your dog cooked bones either. Cooked bones definitely are the ones that splinter um, and break into little pieces and are much more likely to get stuck in their intestine and if you do think that you, your dog is showing any signs um, of, of an obstruction um, getting them to the vet early is going to give us the best chance of getting them well and back and on their feet again quickly. Next time at the Rangiora Vet Centre, Sophie talks to us about caring for our best friends as they get older.